What is up fish fam? Seth Cruz here from Seth's Aquariums. I know it's been a while since I've posted a video, but this time around we're going to post a complete full fish room tour of all my tanks, all the stuff I've had going on, and even uh, my outdoor project which I've been working on all month. So let's just take a look and see what we got going on. So as usual, I'm going to start with my 29 gallon Molly tank. Now, if you want more information about Molly's, I did make a little video called WTF, What's That Fish Molly's that I'll link to in the description and up above so you can click on and get some more info. Now, this tank, I like to call it my Molly jungle because the uh, crypts have really kind of taken over and, and made a lot of uh, plant growth in there for all the babies to hide out in. Um, there's not a whole lot that's really happened with this tank, except we've had a couple highs and a couple lows. And what I mean by that is uh, I did have a, quite a few fish out of here that I was able to sell the other day. Um, sold about 60 of them, and that was kind of nice. But I also had an issue where my large male silver sailfin molly uh, unfortunately passed away. Not entirely sure what happened to him. Uh, none of the other fish seem to be affected. I don't see any signs of disease or anything. Um, I do have a young male that's kind of coming up. Um, he's reached his adult size and now he's trying to breed with females. I'm wondering if maybe they got into it a little bit um, and, and the old male just wasn't able to, to compete or if something could happen there. Um, Anyways, all the other fish seem great, so I'm not really that concerned about it, but it was kind of too bad that I had to lose that silver male. I really liked him. So while we're looking at this tank, I wanted to take a moment to clue you all in on kind of what my goals are with this tank. And so what I'm doing with this tank is trying to produce what they call blue mollies, which you can see on the screen here. Um, blue mollies are mollies that you produce by crossing in the regular gold dust, or sometimes they're called gold panda mollies to just your average blacks or speckled mollies and you'll see that they have kind of an iridescent blue sheen on their side uh, i think they're really cool um, i really enjoy the kind of overall look of them especially when they get that little bit of a gold bib around their head i think they look kind of kind of cool just a little bit different than your average molly um, and i'm going to work with them and try and develop a leer or liar tail strain uh, just for something to do and kind of have my own little strain of mollies going. I, I think it's kind of fun and I'm just going to clue you in on uh, what I'm doing. So we'll keep uh, kind of tabs on these guys and see how it develops over time. Um, I am going to have to keep a couple of these gold dusts around though to cross back in and keep that iridescent blue going. So I think that's all for the mollies and uh, let's move on to our next tank. So what we're looking at here guys is a 10 gallon guppy tank that's actually situated in the rack directly below my molly tank. Um, these guppies uh, are really just kind of mutt guppies. There's a little bit of everything in there. Um, I don't really do too, a whole lot to kind of curate it or um, keep them kind of developed toward a strain. I just kind of let them do their own thing. As you can see, I have a ton of guppies coming out of this tank, guys. Um, I really don't do a whole lot except feed and do water changes. Uh, I don't trim the plants. I don't get rid of algae. I just kind of let these guys do their thing. Um, some of these guppies will be going outside, and you'll see my outside setup at the end of this video. Uh, I do really like uh, the look of these guys. I, they do produce some kind of interesting stuff now and then. Um, there are some endlers in here too. I'm not really sure where they came from, um, but they're very clearly endlers or endler hybrids. So they must have uh, had some of those genetics in their makeup uh, when I originally got them. So anyways, not a whole lot more to say about this tank. Um, I am going to give you a little bit of a close-up here of some of the different guppies that I have in here, but really just kind of your run-of-the-mill standard uh, mutt guppies, just lots of different colors and patterns and variations, and, you know, it's something fun to play with, so I like having them around. So next I'm going to take you through this rack of three 10-gallon tanks. The rack is actually something I built uh, using a, a kind of a method that the king of DIY has kind of popularized and made famous over on his YouTube channel. Uh, if you've somehow managed to watch this video without first checking out the King of DIY, which I'm not sure how that would happen because he's the largest aquarium uh, YouTuber, but anyways, uh, you should definitely go check him out. Lots of amazing stuff. Um, he's gonna have an aquarium gallery out soon, so it's just really like a really great place to hang out if you're an aquarium fan, so uh, go check him out. But to get back to this rack, it's just three 10 gallon tanks. Um, nothing really too fancy about it, but I'll take you through each of the tanks. So we'll start with the bottom tank. Now, this tank has a couple guppies in here. I uh, grabbed a couple of the nicer sort of sunset 
red guppies out of one of my other colonies and put them in here and I'm gonna let them kind of do their thing and see if I can't get a little bit of a strain going. Um, the other fish in here that I'm really excited about that are my newest fish in my fish room are these long fin bristlenose plecos. I think I believe they're chocolate, chocolate, sorry, bristlenoses. And I really enjoy kind of the long fin varieties of bristlenoses. I've never really been a big pleco guy, but I saw them and I was like, man, I had to have them. So they're in here right now, uh, kind of getting acclimated. I split the group that I got between this tank and my large uh, 40 gallon tank. So I'll show you that as well. But right here, we're looking at one feeding on a Sarah Onip tab. I put them in here before I started recording just so that we could kind of lure them out and get them on video. So far, so good with these guys. They're kind of blunt, you know, doing their thing and getting used to their surroundings. Um, I haven't really had any problems. I did medicate them um, as soon as I put them in this tank uh, with some erythromycin and some general cure just to kind of uh, make sure that they weren't carrying anything. But so far, so good. I did put a couple extra hidey holes in this tank just to give them a place to hide out um, during the day when they, they want to be kind of hidden, and they seem to enjoy that. So overall, I'm really excited about these guys. I'm hoping I can get them big enough to breed and kind of get my own little colony going um, either in this tank or in one of my other tanks so I will keep you all posted um, but that's really kind of all that's really going on with this tank right now so next up in the middle of this rack is another 10 gallon guppy tank now I started this colony by taking out my best snakeskin reds and yellows from the other tank that you've already seen and putting them in here and kind of letting them uh, live together and, and colonize this tank and you'll see that uh, after a generation or two, I am starting to get some nice kind of red snake skins out of here. So that was kind of the goal, and it's working well. I've um, got a big old clump of java moss over there for fried hideout in. And another technique that I use is I like to let duckweed hang out at the top of these tanks. Um, the live bear fry can kind of get in the duckweed and eat all the different little detritus and microorganisms that are hanging off of the roots. And it kind of seems to be a really effective way of providing some cover and making the fish feel secure. So I actually don't mind duckweed in some of my live bear tanks. And that's what we have going on here. So otherwise, just a pretty straightforward guppy tank. Um, like I said, just kind of focused on the reds and yellows in this one. And not much else to it. All right, guys. So the last tank in this rack is, again, a 10-gallon tank. And this tank is actually just kind of my hodgepodge tank. Um, not a whole lot of plan or especially great care went into this tank um, as far as figuring out what I wanted to do with it. Um, I just had an empty tank and I took sort of a couple different fish that I had from other setups and put them in here and it seems to be doing pretty well. So first of all, we have a, a school of cherry barbs in here. Um, if you've never kept cherry barbs, I highly recommend them if you want uh, kind of a showy little schooling fish. Um, I don't find them to be very aggressive at all. Um, the males will sometimes display for each other, but otherwise they uh, tend to keep to themselves and they do add a lot of nice kind of dark red color to the tank. Um, I also have a female beta in here who is very, very egg bound um, and needs to <laughs> have something happen to alleviate that. I've tried a couple different things and um, haven't been able to get her to release those eggs. So. And then finally, we have this right here is my Cryptoharos Nanoludius. Um, he's kind of camera shy. I didn't really like this camera, so he was kind of hanging out uh, over behind the sponge filter. But anyways, uh, just kind of a little bit of a hodgepodge tank. Have a couple different fish thrown in here. Um, one big Amazon sword. As you can see, I'm struggling with some diatom algae. Um, so I'm going to have to up the flow in this tank and get some more uh, kind of movement in the water. Um, I did add this little corner internal filter. So we'll see if I can get rid of some of that algae. Um, there's the female beta there. She's really egg bound. <laughs> so anyways, uh, a fun little tank, but nothing too crazy or special about it. This next rack has two tanks in it. One is a 29 tall, which is a little bit awkward and uh, it's not great uh, for viewing on camera, but I will talk about it a little bit. And then I just have a little five gallon tank uh, underneath that's got a couple different fish in it. So let's dive in. So this right here is a five gallon tank that currently houses one of my bettas uh, and also four or five cardinal tetras that are left over from a much larger school that I had. 
Uh, they're getting to be about, let me see, they're probably about four years old now. So they're probably near the end of their life cycle. Um, I have been kind of losing one or two over the last couple months. You know, every couple weeks I might lose one or whatever. So they're kind of living out the rest of their lives in here. Um, it's just like a nice calm setup for them. And they, they're doing well, so I don't really have any complaints there. Um, the Betta is nothing really that crazy or expensive. He was like a $5 Betta at Petco. Um, I liked how chunky he was. He's just he's just a little chunkster, um, and I really enjoy it. So I named him Clem. So this is, this is Clemmy's tank. And uh, nothing really crazy in here. Some dwarf uh, chain sword, I think it is. Um, not a huge plant aficionado, but I did want something to kind of grow around and not necessarily carpet but just kind of spread out a little bit so I grabbed a little clump of that um, I think it was at PetSmart and it's as you can see it's it's spread over quite a bit of the tank um, I do have a lot of duckweed on the top of this tank as well because the tetras uh, seemed like they weren't feeling very secure so I threw some duckweed in and now that there's a cover on the tank essentially that, that they really seem to feel more at home and I catch them outside uh you know swimming around quite a bit more so overall uh you know this tank just runs off a little sponge I do my water changes um every once in a while I'll get in there and, and kind of do a little bit of a gravel vac or whatever and and kind of clean up but as you can see I, I kind of let it go wild and do its own thing which is kind of my style with a lot of my planted tanks I don't like to kind of tell them what to do I let them do their their own thing and and, and kind of do nature so um, this tank is doing well uh, I do think I might need to throw a heater in here um, get a little bit warmer it's been hanging out around 73 74 um, and both the Cardinal and uh, Clemmy here would like it to be a little bit warmer than that so I am gonna hopefully pick up a little heater and put it in here and just kind of crank it up a little bit but otherwise I, I like how this tank is going um, and it's doing pretty well so the next tank in this rack is a 29 gallon tall and I gotta be honest guys this is probably my least favorite tank in the fish room. I don't really like how tall this tank is because I have a hard time um, getting light all the way to the bottom and as you can see this tank is really low light and that's because one it has a duckweed cover on it and two it has kind of a crappy light. So. I am thinking at some point here I'm either going to get a more expensive light and kind of pump more light into this tank and see if that kind of makes it more appealing to me or I'm going to have to remove that duckweed which I don't really want to do because the live bears really like it um, and before I put it in there they were acting a little dodgy and now that it's in there they are a lot more comfortable so I don't really want to get rid of that. Um, but I'm going to have to do something about this tank because it's so kind of murky and everything looks green. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know, I just I don't really enjoy looking in it. And why else, you know, do we keep fish if not to enjoy looking in our tank? So I'm going to be doing something different with this tank. I'm just not sure what it is. As far as stocking in this tank goes, it's primarily a guppy and molly tank. Uh, I just have some guppies in here that were taken from my uh, mutt colony that are all kind of blue or have blue tones to them uh, just to kind of get a nice little group going in here. There's also um, some Celestial Pearl Danios in here uh, which you can kind of see here but like again it's it's difficult to make them out. Um, there's a pair of Scarlet Battis, some Tillstream Loaches, and a Yo-Yo Loach uh, who's really only in here temporarily to clean out a bunch of snails that I had going on. Um, so that, that's pretty much the stocking in this tank. Um, I, the community gets along well and they, they're all kind of thriving but um, as I said I really don't like the look of this tank it doesn't appeal to me so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet but I will be um, kind of messing with it and seeing seeing what I can come up with in the future so stay tuned for that alright guys so this right here is Jaeger my convict cichlid he hangs out right now in this 10 gallon tank that I've kind of customized for him um, I don't recommend you doing that if you're kind of new to fish keeping or keeping cichlids in general. Um, 10 gallons is, is kind of a tall order for a convict cichlid. Um, he's doing all right in here and this isn't going to be his permanent setup. Um, it's just he, he was getting pretty aggressive with his tank mates and so this ended up being uh, kind of his temporary uh, stop. I'm hoping I'm going to be moving soon and moving a bunch of things around in my fish room and so his ultimate destination is going to be either a 20 long or a 29 gallon tank that he'll probably have to himself um, but for right now he does all right in here 
Um, it's t like I said, it's 10 gallons. I've customized the filter box so that he can't tear up his sponge filter, which he has a habit of doing. <laughs> so uh, his sponge filter goes in there, and then in the wintertime, his uh, heater will go in there as well if he's still in here so that he can't really mess with it. Um, otherwise, not much to say about this tank. Uh, he, he kind of is doing all right, and um, he likes to kind of hang out behind those rocks sometimes, and he comes out and fights with me at the glass. So the final tank I'm going to show you guys in this update is my 40 gallon long um, kind of community tank and this tank was featured in one of my more recent videos um, because I was talking about the Thrick 3 Telluride that are in it um, but as you can see there's just sort of a few species of fish here there's the Thrick 3 Telluride which are the cichlids that you can see um, there are some Sanke swordtails and there are a school of diamond tetras. Um, I actually recently added a couple mollies in here as well, just because I wanted to kind of start a new colony. And there are a couple of the bristlenose catfish in here as well. So um, this tank is really doing great, except I kind of noticed something this week, guys. And so what I noticed was that the Hellerai for the first time, were kind of starting to pair off and divide the tank amongst themselves as you can see here um, on the left of your screen you'll see two of them that are kind of working as a pair and sort of near the right or middle of the screen there's one of my big males that's kind of uh, fighting them off and so I noticed this and decided that I wanted to change the scape of this tank a little bit um, first of all I've been having some problems with diatom algae and I wanted to add a little bit of movement and second of all, now that these fish are kind of maturing into adults and looking to spawn, I wanted to kind of play around and give them a little bit of a, of a scape that kind of catered to that and gave them some places to potentially spawn or kind of get away from each other. So what I ended up doing, guys, is taking a bunch of cichlid stones, some of which were in other tanks, and I kind of pulled them out, and I siliconed them together and made this big, gigantic kind of tower. And the reason why I did that is... First, I wanted to break up the sight lines in the tank a little bit so that some of these Thrick 3s could set up territories um, kind of away from each other. Um, second of all, I, I've always kind of enjoyed tanks where you have rock towers and fish kind of swim around and among them. I think it kind of adds a cool natural look. And then third of all, with the new addition of the bristlenose uh, plecos to the tank, I wanted to give them plenty of places to hide out and when they get large enough, maybe even potentially breed. So uh, I thought that was kind of a, a interesting way to do it. Um, I do kind of like the look. I, I think it adds a little something to the tank. And so far, it's been working. So as soon as I was able to add in uh, that big rock formation, one pair of the Thurik 3s uh, immediately began laying eggs. Um, as you can see here, uh, this was kind of their prepping time where they were going around and cleaning those those rocks. but. Uh, they ended up laying a little, a little clutch of eggs right on top of that rock. Um, it, it ended up immediately getting eaten. I think either the catfish ate them or the cichlids themselves kind of got flustered and ate them. But they did have a nice little clutch, uh, which was interesting to see because they hadn't really done that for me before. Now the very next day, the other pair of Thurik 3s actually ended up laying eggs in this little piece of driftwood here. Um, and this is a video, you can see the male is actually protecting those eggs. Now the eggs were white in color, which leads me to believe that he never actually got around to fertilizing them. Um, this is their first time attempting this, so sometimes with these cichlids, they don't really know the, uh, the whole song and dance just yet. So he uh, did protect those eggs as though they were fertilized, but I don't think he actually uh, was able to achieve fertilization. Um, the eggs lasted for about a day, day and a half before they all disappeared. So my theory is they either fungused over and the Thurichthrys themselves picked them out or one of these catfish got in there and kind of did the job for them. So anyways, it was interesting to see these two groups uh, kind of go through their first uh, attempt at spawning. And again, it didn't really happen until I put this big rock tower in there. So they certainly um, are using it to set up their territories, which I'm glad. I think it's actually kind of working. So... I was glad to see that happen. Um, as far as other fish in the tank go, the swordtails and the diamond tetras are still doing great. Um, they don't really seem to be bothered by the spawning activities of the cichlids. And I was actually really surprised how sort of little aggression the cichlids were showing towards their tank mates. They didn't really go after them at all. I saw diamond tetras 
swim right over uh, egg clutches and, and nobody really thought twice of it. So that's kind of cool to see. I am excited about these new bristle nose. I really hope that they settle in in this tank and are able to potentially spawn in one of those caves. Um, I, I, I have never had plecos before, but I'm really enjoying these guys and kind of all their little behaviors and the different things they do. They're very different than all my other fish, um, so I will keep you guys posted. So finally, as promised, I'm going to give you guys a look at my little outdoor project that I did. Um, I'm by no means a master carpenter, so don't mind my totally weird looking uh, setup here, but basically what I ended up doing is building a kind of framework to put this 16 gallon tub in. Um, it, it holds it up off the ground so things like raccoons and stuff can't get in and I built kind of a mesh uh, box around it so that birds and stuff can't really get in there and get at my fish. So you open up the doors and you look inside. Um, this is a 16 gallon tote. Um, I got it at a feed store. Um, it's, it's actually for plants, but it's working pretty good for fish and it has some pre -hilled, uh, sorry, pre-drilled holes in the side that I like so that when it rains, the water will come kind of over the top and come right out. Um, I'm using this solar panel here that I got off of Amazon to run a solar powered air pump that kind of came with it. Um, which is really kind of nice and you can see that right now when you're looking at it It's not even really all that bright out. It's actually really kind of cloudy and it's near the end of the day and It kind of goes down to that air pump there um, And it's actually still kind of getting bubbles going so even when it's not all that sunny um, It does generate some bubbles in this tank, you know in some airflow Which I like and then of course when it's sunny out it really gets cranking so um, this tank has some crypts in it that I put in and pots that I just kind of took out of my molly tank. Uh, it's got some water sprite that I just cut a, I kind of took a cutting and let it float. Um, it, it's got some duckweed because all my tanks have duckweed. Um, and then I just kind of put a couple pieces of driftwood in just to give uh, these fish some places to hide out. Um, the fish in the tank are just a group of guppies that I took from uh, my mutt guppy tank and then I took some of the ones that weren't really uh, blue or red from those tanks that I'm focusing on and, and threw them in here um, just to kind of get it all nice and muddy. Um, I did get this Eheim uh, auto feeder from Aquarium Co-op when they had their 4th of July sale recently. Um, I love Eheim's auto feeders um, and I put it out here so that they can uh, get fed four to four times a day without me having to walk out here and do it so it works really well. Um, as you can see, they like to come up and eat, and it's kind of fun to watch them. Um, I, it's very different to look down at guppies instead of looking at the side, and it's, they're sort of different fish that I end up noticing, um, which is kind of cool. So uh, overall, I'm, I'm really pleased with the setup so far. Uh, as you can see, it's just uh, got some good growth going on with the plants, and the fish seem to be doing well. Um, so I really am enjoying it. I don't really know what I'm going to do in the future with this, if I'm going to kind of expand this little operation um, kind of get more fish going or not, but for now it's just, it's just a fun little setup for me to grow a couple plants and some fish and kind of have some fun outside. So that's going to do it for the June and July fish room update guys. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will do my best to bring more content like it in the future. If you don't like this video, give it a thumbs down because that lets me know that I need to uh, do something different for this channel. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this, then feel free to subscribe because I intend to do these uh, fish room updates either monthly or bi-monthly depending on my schedule. Um, for now, that's going to do it guys, but I hope your tanks are doing well and I'll see you next time.